something you can't have the beer like a dog. Lots of times people start, you know, chasing something for its own end. Remember that if it doesn't taste good, then it doesn't matter how healthy it is. It has to taste good first. Uh, and I think why I think if you as you entered, you have seen those three pillars: uh, taste, affordability, and nutrition. I think that's what Raju from the first day has been chasing, and I think that is what is very exciting. That if taste isn't there, then it doesn't matter how healthy it is. You're not going to eat it. It has to taste good. Kids, like you said, kids will just spit it out. You can tell them this is really tasty, but they'll just spit it out because there's no filter like this. You know, uh, with all these products, I think the un the, the second derivative benefit is that we will end up making something really, you know, glamorous out of millets. Lots of people take the other and saying, oh, millets, great Indian culture, uh, we used to be a millet eating, millet producing. That's not the way to sell it. To sell it, you have to make it taste good. If something else tastes better, people are going to eat that. And this is why, you know, all of you uh, arrange for a sample bag uh, to take. The most important thing is take it and taste it as yourself, as your family, as your kids. And that is what I think uh, is the key. Uh, you know, if you're going to make a millet chicky, it has to be as good, if not better than the peanut chicky. That's the only way to sell. Uh, if you're going to make a rusk, it has to be as good as a regular rusk. Otherwise, people taking the other route often get lost. Uh, and so, the answer to your question is that yes, it's millet based, and that's the core, and that's that's the secret ingredient that Rumut brings to the table. They really create very, very good quality products. And of course, they do it using a lot of millets and natural ingredients, which is uh, hugely beneficial because it's also in you know, millets. You all know the millets. Okay, so we're moving to our last question. What is the average shelf life of the millets? Excellent question. Yeah. Um, well, average shelf life is, uh, we started with three months. But we gradually improved not by adding chemicals, but we gradually improved through packing techniques. No preservatives? Sorry? Without, no. without any preservatives. We have none of our products have any preservatives. These are uh, gluten free. Sorry? These are gluten free. Yeah. Millets are known for gluten free. Mm -hmm. All the millets are gluten free only. So, I would say that you know, whatever we are launching uh, going forward or whatever we have launched are gluten free, basically. So, that is the uh, underlying fact. But we are not selling it very heavily because that's anyway gluten free is a new jargon that a lot of people are embracing it. But we are not too much into that. We are fundamentally into the nutrition. So we, where we say that, okay, you don't have a calcium, kids need the calcium, adults need the fiber, and uh, we all need the protein. It's a simple fact that we are, we are offering those things. Let's say we don't want to become like a vegan or a gluten free or a pescatarian. Some of the new things, new things which we do not even know. So we don't want to do experiment with unknown things which are not familiar to them. To us. We are a familiar and absolute Indian brand doing things for India, doing things for Indian masses. So that's a core philosophy of that. Incidentally, uh, uh, incidentally gluten free rather than deliberately gluten free. Yeah, incidentally gluten free, that's correct. Okay. Uh, are you going to set up any units in uh, Telangana uh, small towns? Yeah, of course. Yes. So we're working with the Telangana government. By the way, Telangana government also has been uh, uh, asking us to promote these SSG groups um, where uh, there is another angle that we're trying to bring in um, where we will promote, we will pick up these SSG groups and make them entrepreneurs by giving them some incentives to set up the stores where we see that what is with the true good is that there is a predictable volume. If the business makes a predictability, if you don't have the predictability, the whole ecosystem you know, will always be in you know, a roller coaster. So you always have a ups and downs, but with uh, with us the advantage is that we have a predictable volume, which is always on the ascending uh, graph. So to answer your question, yes, we will be opening like a micro factories with our uh, templatized model. That is where we ironed out. So the first and foremost uh, thought process was that we wanted to make our factories extremely templatized. That means anyone with a minimum training or a week to ten days training can go and set up a factory which is as good as an international you know, export ready factory. So, how many people are working uh, uh, in one unit? So, on and off we have about 250 people um, working with us. Total headcount? Total headcount is around 200, between 200 and 250. You know the lab of force where there is a in one factory. Each factory? Each factory 
can change this because the smaller factors to bigger factors, the number of things will change. But on an average, at a company level, they have 250 people. Okay, thanks for providing value. Okay, thanks so much. Good morning, Dr. Five new uh, factors coming within the AP and Telangana or other stores? We are opening in Chhattisgarh. We, yeah, we are, we are opening in Chhattisgarh. That's where I think even uh, the government, one of the district uh, uh, doctors directly approached us and they said, no, no, he has uh, heard about the story in AP and Telangana. And then he also replicated that in uh, Chhattisgarh. That's where we are just going and opening because he wants to promote local employment as well. This year? Uh, most likely this year. This year means we are ready to find another this year. Maybe probably like six months. Yeah. Yeah. So remaining four in a both uh, time. Yeah, about six months time frame. Uh, we, we we are likely to open uh, two more in Telangana and then uh, at least two in uh, AP. At least two in AP. So remaining in uh, the remaining outside uh, four in, uh, yes, in the other states. Other states. Yes. So what are the investments in uh, next three years? So. So we are making about uh, 55 crores from Oak's cap. Yeah. Right? So out of which we don't want to really put a lot of money into just infrastructure building. Right. We will be doing, we will be utilizing these funds perhaps to do the brand building yeah. exercise. Right? Yeah. So we want at least a 50% Indian population to know that there is a brand exists that sells a fire away and I can safely take the chicken because I am going to be abundantly nutritious. So where that exercise is very important for us to do the brand building. So far we have not even spent one rupee on the marketing and branding at all so far. So for the next two to three years, we'll be heavily spending on the brand building exercise because we are truly a brand that can sell to the masses and we are a profitable brand. So which is what we wanted to probably tell to India. So we want as as many Indians as possible, we want them to know that there is a brand exists that they give you your best health and nutrition at a five rupee, uh, five rupee price point. So that is where we will be spending most of the money and then of course we will spend on the infrastructure upgrade and also opening up the new factories. We are still working out uh, in terms of where to spend money. But predominantly brand building and R&D is something that we will continue to focus on. That 55 crores including the setting up of new factories also? Yes, yes, that's correct. What are the new products are coming up? How many products are needed to uh, We have uh, in our uh, product portfolio nearly 14 products so far. 14. 14 products are there, but we are, we are only focusing on 5 to 6 products. And then 5 to 6? Yes, we are only focusing on 5 to 6 products. <coughs> Out of the 14, focusing on 4 5 products. Five, six. And we are continuing to build uh, uh, the new products. Again, you will see tremendously innovative products from Google. Uh, these are very radically innovative. And I hope that these are the game changers um, in some specific category. We wanted to be very, very, very close to the daily staples. That means every day you need these products. It's not by force you are eating it. Because you know, generally when you go to these uh, modern grade like you know these stores, when you go and see a very pampered packing uh, bar, and you are compelled to buy it, but you will not repeat it because you know that's a 75 rupees, which is perfect for, for for all of us to buy it. And then secondly, there is no repeatability from the taste point of view. So, we definitely wanted to bring the staple products that means every day you definitely are consuming. For example, rust. Rust is the space where we, we have introduced baggy based rust. It exactly tastes the same thing like your normal rust. We are not going to be introducing something which is very, very unfamiliar to you in terms of taste. The taste will remain the same. That is the beauty of the product building exercise. That we are building, we are building the products necessarily the same taste. But with the with high level uses. So that's what we're trying to do. Instead of being meta, you know, it'll it'll be out of merit flour. So yeah. and it's a lot healthier for you than eating a meta based plus. But it's something that you have with your tea, no matter where you are in India, you have plus with your tea. Uh, so that's the general idea. Uh, still see this move to uh, yeah. again, that's a very, very interesting product. Uh, again, when you taste it, you find that you know, it's as exciting as having a regular look, so it's not that I'm selling it to you because I think oh, it's really healthy for you, you don't eat that. Uh, it's, you eat it because you like the taste, very, very good to, you know, it's a spicy taste that people like, that's why they need for it. Uh, but it is very taste. So, so those two three products are the four that are just going forward, and of course we keep innovating and uh, introducing our products.
Thank you. When will you start it? Any time frame or deadline? We'll be starting at about six months time frame to come. But we'll of course enter into the Chattis constraint in December itself. Okay. But we will invariably open the factory in the... The products are being sold now. Right now we're sending, we're sending the first equipment to Chattis constraint. We, we, we didn't sell it yet, but we're going to be rolling it out. From, from where are you sourcing uh, these millets? From directly from farmers or...? Uh, Oh, well, that's a big topic anyway. There's a lot of uh, farmer producing operations, farmer producing operations, FPOs, and then the farmers are. And that itself is a big topic to deal with. But uh, to technically tell you, uh, we are sourcing directly from limited farmers. But predominantly, we are sourcing these from the Pandis. Uh, the major source of millets are from Rajasthan and then uh, Orissa, Karnataka, and then our uh, AP, Karnulu. Bundor Karnur also on the areas where this works in this time. So any other questions uh, anybody has or even the Zoom? Uh, anyone have any questions? So one more, one more thing that I think before uh, we just wind up, I want all of you to raise the basic GPs. And uh, the, good, the, the thing that I would like to tell you is that if you don't like the chicken, you don't even need to, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't need to present a case anyway. Yeah. So that is where I think we are very uber confident of our products. If you don't like it, you don't need to publish anything for us. So we want to really uh, taste these chickpeas and appreciate what we are trying to do. And uh, we are a proud Indian uh, company. And also the other important factor is that uh, Oaks is the only company, uh, only fund that I have uh, uh, spoken with multiple funds. But these are the people who really believed in what we are trying to do, which is essentially the effort of products. I have uh, spoken with few venture capital funds who always stress on the numbers in you know, respect of um, you know, what this chicky and uh, what the masses are. They always talk about you know, how many modern states, modern stores are there and then uh, how many elite cult people are eating it. I think we are not building that story for cult. We are building the story for Indians. So that's what we are trying and I am really fascinated of uh, provokes believing in what I am trying to do. So if they don't believe in what I am trying to do, ultimately there will always be some creative fights uh, down in the road. So I hope that they will continue to give us the freedom of creativity. Exactly. Now we will continue to build, the, build these products for Indian masses. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, anybody have any questions? Yeah, uh, pretty. Uh, if, if you look at the operational opportunity, the 10 packs, the plan to explore the digital and offline offline Okay, you are talking about the digital presence? Digital and offline, what is your plan? Omnichannel. Or so, especially, to be very brutally honest, the digital friend of the fire of the chicki, I know there will be traction, but it will not be tremendously like a tsunami level of orders. But we, of course, will be present in the digital. We are going to be keeping our website live and also. We have been selling in Amazon, but now we will be making a part investment. We have to change our structure, online structure, but we sell in the video. In the digital platforms, all the digital platforms will be present. And in the offline, primarily our target will be uh, the Kirana stores basically and a little bit of uh, the modern trade. Uh, wherever there is, uh, there is always ask for the modern trade, but we will go there. Predominantly, we are selling in the Kirana stores. We will be selling in the Kirana stores. Will you be pumping?
you know, vanity associated with being there. Uh, we will be there in whichever form customers want it and it makes sense, we will be there. But uh, general trade and offline is really the largest, uh, when you're in this category, general trade and regular trade is the largest uh, channel. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think.